In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to get the Naomi 2 arcade platform all set up with LaunchBox and RetroArch. If you're unfamiliar with my setup guides, essentially I do most of the hard work for you. And in the case of Naomi 2, most of that hard work goes into actually getting these games running, with multiple things needing changing in their test menus before they will even boot. Now, Naomi 2 games do differ from Naomi 1 games and Sammy Atomis Wave, and as a result, they are far more demanding on hardware. And in previous years, it was only Demol that supported Naomi 2, and its compatibility wasn't that great. So I was actually shocked to learn that Flycast can run all but one of the 13 Naomi 2 games, with that one game not running being Driving Simulator. But Flying Head does have plans to support this game in the future. I've also pre-configured all of these controls so they are as perfect as possible. And I've also provided control layout images for all of these games. All you need to do is provide the emulator and the ROMs, then put my pre-configured files in the correct locations and that's everything set up. And that significantly reduces the setup time. So let's get into it. What you want to do is bring yourself over to this LaunchBox forum page here. I'll pop the link in the description below. And for the moment, we're just gonna scroll down to this table here. Now I need to talk about ROMs, CHDs, and which versions of these games actually work. Now you want these ROM versions specifically, and I've put those below every single game here, so you know which ones you need to grab. And if a game needs a CHD file, I've put CHD required. Now not all of the versions of these games will work in Flycast, so you must grab these versions for all of these to work. As to where you should put all of those files, that's really easy. So just go into the LaunchBox file system, go into games, and you're gonna to wanna to create a folder called Sega Naomi 2, which is what I've already done. And then place all of your files inside. If you don't already have it, you want to download the Flycast core. So just start RetroArch up, go down to online updater, core downloader, and we want to find at Sega Dreamcast slash Naomi. So keep going, there it is download that, I've already got the latest version. Now, while I'm here, I do need to speak about which graphics backend you should be using, and this is hugely important for Sega Naomi 2. So go into drivers, and then go down to video. RetroArch should have GL Core set as its default, and this is essentially OpenGL, or it provides the graphics backend that the core is calling for. And this is what you want for most platforms, except with Naomi 2. Because Naomi 2 games are more demanding, when I use GL Core on my pokey little rig, which is an AMD FX 8350 and 960 graphics card, I only get between 20 and 30 frames per second, when it should be 60. So I've done some testing with the other backends, that's Flycar Supports, which is Vulkan, Direct3D11 and 9. Now when I was using Vulkan, unfortunately the game would only launch one time in 10. It would take 10 attempts to actually launch the game. And also I saw some quite janky pop-in and assets and it wasn't actually that great. But when I used Direct3D 11, everything worked perfectly at a locked 60 frames per second. So if your rig cannot run these games at GL Core, use Direct3D 11. We also need to ensure that all of the folder locations where our pre-configured files need to go are created. And this is done by simply starting a game. So just go to load content, Go to where your ROMs are located. So games, oh, I should have gone the other way. Sega Naomi 2, and we're just gonna start an actual ROM file here. So we're just gonna start Beach Spikers, load archive, and make sure you select Flycast. And you need to wait until you can see gameplay footage just to ensure that all of those file locations have been created. And there we go, now we can just press escape. Now they're created, we need to grab our pre-configured files. So bring yourself back to this LaunchBox forum page and click download this file. And we want to download the NVMem files and the controller remap files. And you've also got the controller layout images if you want to download those as well. After we've done that, we need to get all of these files in the correct location. And we're gonna start with the NVMem files. So just double click on the zip file. You shouldn't need to unzip it because the files are so small. And with the RetroArch file system, you want to go into saves. And depending on how you have your save set to save, the Rycast folder that we need could be in one of three locations. And yes, I did say Rycast folder, it's just a remnant of the old days. So that Rycast folder might just be in this folder here, just under Rycast. Or it might be in a folder called Flycast. But in my case, because I have all of my saves set to save to content directory, 
it's going to be in Sega Naomi 2. And there we go, right cast. And I'm just going to select all of these and bring those across. And obviously replace the Beach Spikers one. And there we go, that's all done. With the controller remap files, again, just open up the zip file. You shouldn't need to unzip it. And with the RetroArch file system, go into config, go all the way down to remaps, go into flycast, select all of these and bring them across and obviously replace anything that's already there. And it's all of your controls pre-mapped. And don't forget, you've got these button layout images for your front ends or just for reference. Now let's move over to LaunchBox and get everything imported. So to start LaunchBox up, go up to Tools, Import, Run Files, and click Next. Now we don't want to add folder, we want to add files because we don't want to be adding all of these CHDs. So just find where your ROMs are located and I'm gonna click on the actual first zip file here, scroll down to the bottom one, hold my Shift button and click there and that selects them all. Then I'm just gonna press Open, press Next, now you will need to find Sega Naomi 2 from this list. It's pre-populated for me, but it might not be for you. There we go, Sega Naomi 2, press next. And obviously we want our emulator to be RetroArch and the core needs to be Flycast. There we go. And this also sets our associated platform for this core as well. Press next, use files in their current location, search for metadata, press next. I'm not going to tell you which artwork to download because that's pure personal preference. I'm not going to download any bezels. Now for this section here, we need to import files from specified folders only. And we also need to use the force using MAME metadata. Otherwise the LaunchBox database is not going to find these games. Then press next. And now we're at the MAME import wizard. Now we actually want to import all clones. Select none here. And you can create playlists for these games if you want, but I'm not going to for this example. Press next. And there we go. Press finish. Wait for that to import. And there we are. So let's scroll down to find where that is. There we go. Now, if I right click on this and press edit and then go to parents, I can place this wherever I'd like. And I can even place it in multiple locations but I'm just gonna keep that in Arcade. And there we go, that's how to get all of these games imported. If you've changed your graphics backend and you're noticing some frame drops, there's some things that we can do to get some extra performance. So just go into Core Options, into System, and you can always disable the DSP, which makes these games run a little bit faster. And obviously you can always decrease your internal resolution. Now I personally don't go above 1440 by 1080 anyway, as you can make some of the 2D assets look a little bit strange and introduce some artifacting. And you can always reduce your antistropic filtering, although this doesn't have a massive impact. Now, if we go into performance, obviously you always want to be using threaded rendering. And with frame skipping, I've tried using this with varying degrees of success. There we go. That's how to get Naomi 2 set up with RetroWatch and LaunchBox. Now, I've already done this process for Sammy Thomas Wave and Naomi 1 games with this release completing the set. And I've also done the Sega Model 2 emulator and the monstrous Supermodel emulator, which took about a month to completely configure and test. So do check out all of that content. And if I saved you some time today, slam me a thumbs up. And if you wanna keep up to date, you know what to do. And apart from that, go play some games. Adios.